In lecture, we did not have a chance to complete the Chapter 3 notes, so I wanted to go ahead and to, uh, complete them on this narrated PowerPoint. Hopefully that will um, also assist you as you are preparing for uh, your laboratory this week. Um, and I will not be covering this additionally in lecture, so this is uh, the way to complete those notes. So here we go. All right. So water, as we've discussed before, has a covalent bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen, and it's a polar covalent bond, which causes water to be a polar molecule. But water, to a very small extent, it can dissociate in water. And when it does this, it transfers a hydrogen ion from one water molecule to another water molecule. Now, when it does this, um, these two water molecules, the one who receives the hydrogen ion becomes a hydronium ion, which is H3O+, and the one that lost the hydrogen ion uh, becomes a hydroxide ion, which is OH-. Again, this is a very rare event, but these hydronium ions and these hydroxide ions have a very profound consequences when we look at biological systems because they are very sensitive to these particular um, to these particular uh, ions. Now, by convention, biologists don't tend to call hydronium ions hydronium ions. Instead, we refer to these ions as hydrogen ions. And when we write them down, we write them as H plus rather than H3O plus. So just know when you see a hydrogen ion, or H plus, it is actually our shorthand for a hydronium ion. And so for the rest of this course, actually you will not see it written as a hydronium ion, you will see it written as H plus. Hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions are very reactive in the cell. And we have terms to discuss each of the uh, types of compounds that either release hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions. Acids are substances that increase the hydrogen ion concentration in a solution. And the example that you see here is hydrochloric acid. Now hydrochloric acid is the acid that you used in laboratory last week. Its uh, chemical formula is HCl. But when it uh, ionizes in water, it forms a hydrogen ion and a, and a chloride ion. Note that it releases hydrogen ions, and so when it is in water, it causes the, uh, it causes the solution to be more acidic. We refer to these as acids. Now, the converse of that are bases. Bases are substances that decrease the hydrogen ion concentration of a solution. Now, the example that's given here is called sodium hydroxide. And sodium hydroxide is the, uh, is the base that you used in laboratory last week. Now, sodium hydroxide, when it ionizes, forms a sodium ion and hydroxide ion. And the hydroxide ion re um, readily uh, combines with hydrogen ions to form water. So essentially, it will decrease the hydrogen ion concentration in the solution because it removes them from the solution. So we have acids, those that increase the hydrogen ion concentration, and bases that do the reverse of that. So how do we measure the hydrogen ion concentration of a solution? Well, we do this by a function called pH. And the pH of a solution is defined as the negative log 10 of the hydrogen ion concentration. Now, if you're not used to working with pHs, this can be a little bit confusing at first. And if you're not used to log functions, especially negative log functions, this could be even more confusing. So first, I'm going to go over just some pH numbers and what they mean. And then I'll talk to you about what happens with these negative log functions as we go. So if you're working with something that has pH 7, this would be something like water. We refer to this as being a neutral solution. So a neutral pH is a pH of 7. Now, as the pH decreases, it is becoming more acidic. So if you have a pH that is less than 7, this is an acidic pH. OK, now the reverse of this is if you have a solution that is greater than 7, 
and uh, excuse me, a pH that's greater than seven. And uh, an example of this would be a basic pH. Okay, so we have neutral pHs of seven, acidic pHs that are less than seven, and basic pHs that are greater than seven. But what happens um, to the hydrogen ion concentration as the um, as pHs go up or down? Because it is a negative log function, what happens is is that as the hydrogen ion concentration, the pH uh, increases, the pH will decrease. So for example, if you start with pH 7 and you go from 7 to 6, even though the pH goes down, the hydrogen ion concentration is actually going up. And as you go from pH 7, for example, to something greater than 7, such as 8, even though the pH is going up, the hydrogen ion concentration is going down. Okay, so that's the first um, aspect of this negative log 10 of the hydrogen ion concentration. The second aspect is that because it is a logarithmic function, each change in the pH, each unit change actually represents a tenfold, a tenfold difference in the hydrogen ion concentration. So the difference between something that is pH 7 and uh, something that is pH 6, actually there is a tenfold increase in the hydrogen ion concentration as you go from 7 to 6. As you go from 7 to 8, in other words, becoming more basic, there is a tenfold decrease in the hydrogen ion concentration. So here's an example where we've got a neutral solution such as pure water, um, human blood, tears, physiological pH is very close to 7. In other words, neutral. Now, as the pH decreases, the hydrogen ion concentration is increasing. And so, as we go from water, to example, to urine, to coffee, to tomato juice, to vinegar, that pH is decreasing, but getting more and more acidic. So for example, the difference in, P in hydrogen ion concentration between six and four, although the number is only two, it's a logarithmic function, so it's 10 to the two, or there's a 100-fold difference between pH seven and pH five, and it is actually, the hydrogen ion concentration is increasing uh, uh, by that 100-fold. Now this is, an, let's take a look as we go and become more basic. This would be now going from pure water, human blood, tears, um, pH 8, seawater, 10, milk of magnesia. This is something that you can uh, take. It's a medicine. Um, ammonia, uh, household bleach, and oven cleaner is extremely basic. So as we are going from pH 7 and the pH is increasing, the hydrogen ion concentration is going down. So for example, the difference between pH 9 and pH 11 is a decrease, a hundredfold decrease in the hydrogen ion concentration. Okay, so I mentioned earlier that changes in uh, uh, these hydroxide ions and these hydrogen ions are um, very reactive in a cell. And so the cell does need to protect themselves from swings in pH, that is from becoming acidic or basic. So cells produce substances that are called buffers. And what buffers do is they minimize the pH change of a solution, and they act as reservoirs for hydrogen ions. In other words, they can accept hydrogen ions, or they can release those hydrogen ions back in the solution, depending on what is happening to the solution. They'll do this in response to pH changes in the solution. So let's take a look at a very simple buffer, and this is carbonic acid. Carbonic acid, if there is a rise in the pH, in other words, if um, there is a decrease in hydrogen ion, it can respond by releasing hydrogen ions into solution. And when it does, it becomes carbonic acid, and then here is that released hydrogen ion. Now, if there is a drop in the pH, okay, so that means there are more hydrogen ions in the solution, the hydrogen ions 
can then can bind to that uh, bicarbonate ion, that acceptor base, to form now uh, the uh, uh, carbonic acid. So the idea is, is that as the pH go, uh, as you get, uh, the solution gets challenged with H+, the buffer can bind it. And as it, uh, there's a decrease in those hydrogen ions, then it, um, it, will, uh, it will release it. Um, what these substances actually are, are weak acids. So uh, it's a weak acid, such as carbonic acid, and its conjugate base, which in this example is bicarbonate ion. And this w allows for that property of being able to uh, act as reservoirs for hydrogen, um, for hydrogen ion. Okay, so that's it for completing Chapter 3. I'll see you next lecture, and we will, beginning, uh, we will begin with Chapter 4. See you then.